supinatus is below the scapula. So two are here. And then below infraspinatus, you have teres. Teres minor, teres major. So those are the muscles in the back of the trunk. Superficial repeating, superficial muscles. Tight shape one is the trapezius. And in the lower part, you have another very big one that is lattice mass, dorsal. And the deeper ones, the amateur scapulae, will do this. Okay, supraspinatus above the spine. You see, all this makes sense. Infraspinatus below the spine. Okay, and then you have rhomboidus minor, rhomboidus, uh, sorry, rhomboidus major, rhomboidus minor here. And here you have teres major, teres minor. Okay, now the muscles of the upper and lower limbs, limb muscles. <clears throat> In the back of the arm, you have one large muscle here. You all know by now, that is called triceps bracket. It has three heads. Long head, lateral head, medial head. That's why it is called triceps. Here, uh, you are looking from the back, right? So this is the triceps here. And you can see the lateral head laterally and the long head medial. Okay? And there is another head. Uh, you don't see it here. You'll see later. So three heads, triceps. It causes what? You see, I told you, the muscle moves towards it. So this causes extension of the forearm. Make sense? extension of the forearm. Uh, there is a small muscle in the back of the elbow that is called anconius. This muscle. This is synergist. You remember I said the main muscle like that is uh, providing maximum force, that's the main one, prime mover, and synergist is the smaller one that helps the main one. Uh, helps to the main one, that's the synergist. So, aconius is a synergist muscle. Okay. But prime mover is the triceps. Prime mover for what? This movement. Extension of the four arm. Okay. And aconius is the synergist. Four muscles are called rotator cuff muscles. You need to remember. What are the four rotator cuff muscles? Supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. What happens, you see, all those four muscles are here, right? Supraspinatus, I have just mentioned above the spine, infraspinatus here, right? Subscapularis here, in subscapular fossa front of the scapula and teres minor. So what happens, you see, this is the glenoid cavity, you all know, glenoid cavity forms the shoulder joint here. So this is the glenoid cavity of the scapula, this one, but the head of the humerus fits. Now glenoid cavity is shallow or deep? Shallow, right? That's why shoulder joint, shoulder dislocation of it. So what happens, you see supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, all these muscles are here, and subscapula is here. So from these four muscles, the tendons go around the glenoid cavity here. So from these muscles, the tendons go around the glenoid cavity. And these are the tendons. So four tendons, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, subscapularis, teres minor, <coughs> and this is the glenoid cavity. And these tendons support the head of the humerus around the glenoid cavity and form a rotator cuff. So you would need to remember the rotator cuff muscles. So triceps and anconius, those are in the back. Now we we'll see the front of the arm. In the front of the arm, 
you have biceps brachii. Under biceps, there is another big muscle that is called brachialis. So biceps, under biceps, you have brachialis. And another muscle you see, go from, goes from here to here. That's why it is called brachioradius. This is the brachial part of the body and this is the radius here, bone, right? So brachioradius. All these make sense, right? All three have brachii. Biceps brachii, brachialis, brachioradius. Make sense? So those three. Now, which one is the prime mover, the main muscle for the flexion of the forearm? If I ask you, some books mention biceps brachii, some books mention brachialis. Both are huge muscles. If I ask, I would prefer the answer brachialis. Brachialis is the prime mover for flexion of the forearm. So here, you see biceps brachii, okay? And small part of brachialis, <coughs> you can see here. Because most part is under biceps. So if you remove biceps, then you can see brachialis, the big muscle here, okay? And this is brachioradius, going to the radius from the arm. That's why it is called brachioradius, okay? So those are the anterior arm muscles helping the flexion muscle. At the side of your arm, you all know this muscle is called deltoid, right? Intramuscular injection, we prefer this muscle, deltoid. Now you tell me, uh, look at me. These muscles move towards them, that is flexion of the forearm, make sense? <coughs> Triceps moves towards it, extension, right? Now deltoid is at the side, right? So we'll move towards it. That makes sense? So that is called what? Abduction. Make sense? Abduction of the arm. So uh, that is deltoid. Now, forearm. In the forearm, you have two compartments. You see, this is the anterior compartment, this is the posterior compartment. Now, you tell me, you all know by now, these muscles, anterior forearm muscles, right, will work on which part of the body? Below it, right? That means hand and fingers. Make sense? We'll go like this. Some of them will end here on the head. Some of them will go to the fingers, right? So we'll move the hand, move the fingers. Flexion of the hand, flexion of the fingers, or digits. Make sense? Towards them. Posture muscles. Posture forearm muscles will go to the back of the hand, back of the fingers, right? Like this. We'll do what? Extension of the head, extension of the fingers. So, and here, forearm muscles for the flexion of the hand, flexion of the fingers, posterior forearm muscles for extension of the hand, extension of the fingers. Okay? <coughs> there are a couple of muscles, they go from the forearm to this digit, that is called polis, polysis. Okay? So those muscles end with polysis. So, now, anterior, so you know that anterior compartment muscles are the flexors, flexors of the hand and flexors of the fingers. So that's why they are called the flexor muscles. What are the flexors or anterior compartment muscles of the forearm? Flexor carpi radialis, flexor carpi ulnaris, femoris longus, flexor digitorum, flexor pollicis longus. All this makes sense, right? First thing, you see, this is very helpful for your lab, this lecture. If I ask you, flexor carpi radialis, okay? So when you will hear flexor, you look where? Front or back? Front, right? Flexor. Because I said this is flexor, this is extensor. So you want to look in the back. You narrow down, right? Flexor. You must look here. Now if I say radialis, then it should be the radial side or ulnar side? Radial side. So we know this is radial side, okay? So look in this side, front, but in this side, make sense? If I say flexor, but ulnar is, we look in ulnar side, make sense? So 
keep those few things in mind that will help you to localize the muscle, identify the muscle, right? That makes sense. Okay. Palm is long as in the muscle. The, if you see the end of the muscle goes to the palm and say palm is. Okay. Now if I say flexor digitora, digit fingers, right? So flexor front digitorum, if you see it carefully, you will see the tendons split like this and go to the digits. Make sense? Digitorum. Extensor digitorum in the back will go to the fingers. Okay? Policies will go to this. Polis. Okay? So all these make sense. You keep, if you keep this uh, in mind, you will be able to identify easily. Okay? So anyway, so flexor digitorum will go to the fingers. Okay? Policies will go to the thumb, carpi radialis in the radial side, armor is in the armor side, armor is longus in between radialis <coughs> and armor. So here, you see. First, uh, one muscle you see here that came from the arm, brachioradius. Do you remember that? Brachioradius. That one you will see. Then other muscles, you see flexor carpi radialis in the radial side. Legs of carpi ulnaris in the ulnar side, in between you have the palmaris longus. This one, palmaris longus. Now, if you look carefully, you see palmaris longus goes to the palm. Here, okay. And if you see the deeper muscle, remove them, you will see the flexor digitora. You see the tendon splits and go to the digits, fingers. That's why it splits into four. Go to his fingers. That's why this is toral. Okay? Policies. If you look carefully, you see this is policies. So the tendon goes like this to the palm. Polis. Okay? We'll do this. Flexion of the thumb. Extensor will go from the back like this. We'll do the extension of the thumb. Flexor will go here. Flexion of the thumb. <coughs> extensor will go like this. First extension. Make sense? And abductor will go from the side into abduction, away. So flexion, extension, abduction. Okay. In the back of the forearm, you have extensors. So you see most of them start with extensor. Extensor carpi radialis, extensor digitorum, extensor carpi ulnaris, extensor policies will go to the thumb, polis. There are two. One is brevis, means short. Another is longest, means long. Okay. Extensor indices. This one, uh, you don't have any muscle in the flexor compartment that is only going to the index finger. But in the back extensor compartment, you have a muscle that only goes to the index finger. Make sense? We we use this finger a lot, right, to show something, right, like this. So, extensor indices going to the index finger from back and helps in the extension of the index finger. Okay? We don't have flexor indices. <coughs> then, abductor policies longus. Polis, thumb. This one goes to the side and does abduction. L. Moves the thumb. L. Make sense? So those are the muscles of your forearm. You see this in the back. <coughs> so you see the extensor muscles. In the radial side, radial is, ulnar side, ulnar is, digitorum, going to the digits of fingers. Policies, you see this is policies, goes to the thumb. <coughs> These are deep muscles, extensor indices. You see this one? Going to the index finger alone from the back. Yeah. We'll do this. Yeah. Okay? Um, intrinsic muscles of your hand. Now we'll see the muscles of your hand. In your hand, you have metacarpal bones. You all know these are the metacarpals, five, right? In between the metacarpals, you have small muscles. Those are called interossi. Inter means in between, ossi means osseous, 
bone, osseous tissue, right? Bone tissue. So, you see, uh, these are the metacarpals in between. You have interosseous muscles. And these muscles, you see, originate from the metacarpals, but the tendon goes to the digits, phalanges, finger bones, and help in the movement of the fingers. What kind of movement? Fine movement. Fine movement of the fingers are helped by interosseous muscles. You remember I said flexor digitorum going from here, right? Extensor digitorum going from here. They will do what? Coarse movement. Coarse movement, right? Big movement. But if I want to do painting or you know, small writing, fine movement, those are helped by what? These interosseous muscles. Okay. So uh, smooth, fine movement and coarse movement by the forearm. Smooth fine movements by the interosseous muscles. <coughs> there are two groups: palmar in this side and the dorsal in this side. Okay, so palmar interosseous, dorsal. This is the dorsal interosseous. Okay, so those are the muscles of your upper limb. Now we will uh, quickly go over the lower limb muscles. Lower limb muscles work on hip joint, knee joint, ankle joint, right? So those are the main joints. <clears throat> First we'll see the muscles of your thigh. In the front of the thigh, you have quadriceps. Quadri means what? One, two, three, four. Quadri. How many? Four. Quadriceps. That means how many muscles? Four muscles are there, right? In the front of the thigh. What are those? In the middle of the front of the thigh here, you have a large muscle that is called rectus femoris. Does it make sense? Femoris. Femur. This is the femoral area, you know that, right? So if I say rectus femoris, you will directly look here, right? In the thigh, first thing. Okay? And this is just in the front, middle of the front of the thigh, rectus femoris. Big muscle here. And Around that rectus femoris, we have three vastae. Three what? Vastae. Vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, vastus intermedius. Make sense? So those are four muscles. One rectus, three vastae. Very simple. Just remember two words. Rectus, vastae. Which rectus? Femoris. Right? And vastus medius, lateralis, intermedius. One is medially, one is laterally, one is in between, intermediate. So those are quadriceps muscles. You see here, this is rectus femoris, this is lateral side, fastus lateralis, fastus medius. And where is intermedius? Intermedius is in between these two, that's why it is under the rectus femoris. That's why you don't see here, okay? Under the rectus femoris. <coughs> the muscle crosses the front of the thigh like this like this, crosses the front of the thigh. This is called sartorius. Sartorius, uh, you must remember I mentioned that parallel fibers, parallel fibers in sartorius, like this, like a belt. And this muscle is also called Taylor's muscle. Uh, why in old time, you know, tailors, they stitch the clothes, right, you know, tailors stitch the clothes. They used to sit on ground like this, okay, so, uh, and stitch like this, the clothes, right. Now, I don't know, that's a machine, there. so, uh, the muscle crosses the thigh like this. That's why it's called tailors muscle. Uh, gracilis. This muscle is a straight muscle here in the medial aspect of the thigh. Straight, like this. In the center of the medial aspect of the thigh. So it does what? Attraction. 
remember muscle always moves towards it so if muscle is here in the middle of your medial aspect of the thigh we'll do this make sense adduction so it is a uh, good adductor other adductors are adductor longus all are in the medial side because they will move towards the adduction adductor longus and there should be adductor magnus is not uh, adductor longus here okay adductor magnus so two adductors gracilis all of them are adductors because they move towards them like this hamstring muscles you need to know which muscles belong to hamstring group hamstring group is in the back of the thigh quadriceps group in the front of the thigh hamstring in the back of the thigh make sense so three muscles in hamstring group biceps femoris semi tendinosus semi membranosus those three are hamstring you see here biceps femoris semi tendinosus and then semi membranosus now uh, sometime uh, when you see the model uh, you can get confused which one is biceps femoris which one is semi tendinosus because they look similar the lateral one is biceps femoris the medial one is semi tendinosus and under semi tendinosus you have semi membranosus so those three belong to hamstring group okay in the very upper part of the back of the thigh you have the gluteus you know that here gluteus there are three maximus medius minimus so gluteus okay uh, so if i ask you what are the quadriceps group muscles right four muscles rectus femoris and three vastae <coughs> hamstring how many three semi tendinosus semi membranosus and biceps femoris if i say biceps femoris of course you will look in the femoral area right thigh if i say biceps brachii you will look where arm right brachia Okay, so remember those are the terms you will use to identify right the location where that must should be. If I say rectus abdominis, you will look in the abdomen, right? If I say rectus femoris, you will not look here. You will look in the femoral area. Makes sense. If I say radialis ulnaris, of course, in the arm. Okay. Adductor longus, adductor magnus, I have already mentioned. Uh, you saw those muscles here. Adductor longus, adductor magnus. But if you remove the superficial muscles, you can see them more clearly. So that's what you can see here. Uh, they have removed other muscles. So you can see adductor, uh, this is the adductor magnus. It's a big muscle. Okay. Uh, this is the longest one, and this is the magnus here. This is a big one, magnus. Magnus means magnum, means big, foramen magnum. You remember the big foramen. And this is the uh, adductor brevis. So there are three adductor. Adductor longus is long, brevis is short, and magnus is huge, humongous one. Okay? The three adductors. All have the adduction of the high. Abductors. Abductors will do what? Will do this. Look at me. Abduction, right? Abduction. So we don't have muscles in the lateral side of the thigh. So what happens is the gluteal muscles go like this. Get attached to the side of the femur, like this, from the back. So they help in abduction. Make sense? Because they come from the back but get attached to the side. So they will also help in gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, gluteus minimus and piriformis 
is another muscle that I mentioned is located here, the floor of the pelvic, uh, pelvic floor. So that one also goes to the side of the femur from here. So there I will have that. Here you see those muscles, uh, maximus, medius, minimus. Maximus is the outermost biggest one. If you remove that, cut that, you will see medius. If you cut the medius, then you will see the minimus. Minimus is under the medius. Okay? And piriformis, you see that it comes from the pelvic floor. Okay. Muscles of your leg. This is the leg. In your leg, you have only few muscles, not so many like your forearm. Okay? But one thing you need to remember, you see, if this is your leg, just think this is your leg, okay? This is the foot, right? So, now look at me. The anterior leg muscles go like this, right? To the foot and the toes, like this. So, anterior neck muscles will do what? Flexion or extension? Look at me. This is the flexion of the foot. This is the extension of the foot, right? Flexion of the foot, extension of the foot. So anterior leg muscles go like this. We'll move towards them, right? So we'll do flexion, remember. But anterior forearm muscles do what? Flexion. So opposite. Makes sense, right? So anterior leg muscles go like this and do flexion of the, uh, sorry, extension of the foot, extension of the toes. Posterior leg muscles go like this. From the back of the leg, go down to the sole, part of the foot, bottom of the foot, and we'll do flexion of the toes, flexion of the foot. Make sense? So opposite. Just remember it. So if I say flexor, should be here. Uh, extensor should be here. Flexor should be in the back of the leg. <coughs> anterior leg muscles are tibial is anterior, front of the tibia. Extensor, because anterior does extens uh, extension. So, uh, extensor digitorum, mm -hmm. extensor hallucis. Hallus means big toe. Polis means thumb. Hallus means big toe. Lateral compartment of the leg. This is very uh, easy. If you remember, which bone is the lateral bone of the leg? Fibula, right? So the muscles are attached to it. Fibular is longus, fibular is brevis. The lateral side, this side, okay? And In the back of the foot, you have big muscles. Sorry, back of the leg, you have big muscles. Gastrocnemius and soleus. Those are two big muscles in the back. Cuff muscles. And then you see here the fibula. This is lateral view. So you see fibula is longus, fibula is radius. The front of the tibia, tibia is anterior. If you see extensor hallucis, it is in the front and going to the big toe. Extensor digitorum in the front going to the other toes, digits. Again, digitorum. Okay? So these are the muscles, uh, part of the foot and the toes. This is gastrocnemius. Tendocalcaneus is the strong tendon. This is the strongest tendon of the body. Very powerful. Why? Because when you walk, you see every time you move the heel bone up and down like this. You look at me. I'm moving my heel up. Okay. So to pull the heel upwards, you need this tendon. This is the strongest tendon of the body. Achilles tendon. Okay. <coughs> Tibial is posterior in the back. The big muscle. If you remove gastrocnemius soleus, then you will see tibialis posterior. Okay? So those are the leg muscles. 